Good morning. It is Wednesday, October 9th, and today is the memorial of St. Dennis and his companions. This is Michigan Mornings from Ave Maria Radio and the Ave Maria Radio app. I'm Matthew Handley. Coming up, I have highlights from last night's Senate debate here in Michigan. But first, your local weather and this news. More anti-Semitic flyers were distributed in Metro Detroit communities. In Canton Township, Supervisor Anne-Marie Graham Huddock says at least 40 people reported getting flyers in plastic bags in their driveway on Monday morning. We're a welcoming community. That's one of our pillars. And we are totally against hatred of this, against any group. And it's really sad that a group is trying to divide our communities. And that shows that we must stay even stronger together. She calls the flyers terrible and totally disgusting. Police are working with Oakland County officials to determine if the flyers are connected to others that have been found in the area in the past week. They are asking for surveillance and doorbell camera videos from residents. Several hundred people walked out at the University of Michigan on Monday calling for justice for Gaza. The event was organized by the university's T-A-H-R-I-R coalition, a group calling for Palestinian liberation, and for the university to divest from companies that are contributing to Israel's war with Hamas. One student was arrested by university police during the protest, and the school's board of regents have said they will not be divesting. A deadly fire in Washtenaw County is being investigated by state officials. A deadly fire in Washtenaw County is being investigated by state officials. Firefighters spent over six hours battling the flames at a home in Manchester after a 911 call was made. A 61-year-old man was found dead inside the home once crews got the flames reduced enough to be able to search the house. Manchester Assistant Fire Chief Mike Kuba says the Michigan State Police Fire Marshal Division will investigate and would not say if they suspect foul play in the fire. Florida is bracing for a second major storm in two weeks. Hurricane Milton has re-strengthened to a Category 5, and News Nation's Brian Enten is on the ground. It's weird to be covering this storm that's uh, approaching Florida, and at the same time, there's already so much debris all over the place. Take a look at this. This is the scene uh, in Gulfport outside Tampa. This is what it looks like in many of these neighborhoods. There is just debris 10, 12 feet in the air. This entire area, it was underwater uh, because of Milton. So all of the stuff had to come out of the houses, all the refrigerators and all the drywall and everything you can think of. They stacked it all up out here waiting for it to be picked up. Hurricane Milton remains on track to be the worst storm to hit the Tampa Bay area in over a century. And a little more than 3% of U.S. high school students identify as transgender. That's according to the first national survey on the topic by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. A little over 2% are also questioning their identity. The Catholic Church maintains that one's gender is bound to their biological sex and cannot be changed. This is Michigan Mornings. Now this. Dr. Ray Garendi. I was raised in an Italian Catholic home. We went to church, that's what you did. And now that I'm older, I can't thank my parents enough for allowing me to know about our Lord because ultimately the base that they gave me kept pulling me back to the Catholic Church even though I wandered as a young adult. We're looking at mostly sunny skies and a high near 65 today in Detroit. Tonight will be mostly clear with lows dipping to 43. Tomorrow will be sunny with temperatures around 63. Friday will be sunny and warmer with highs in the upper 70s. It cools again on Saturday with mostly sunny skies and temperatures in the mid 60s. Right now we have clear skies in Detroit and it is 47, 42 at Metro Airport and in Walled Lake. We have a frost advisory in effect this morning in the Saginaw Valley until 9 a.m. Otherwise, we're looking at sunny skies and a high near 65 today. Tonight, we may see some patchy frost and lows dipping to 35. Tomorrow will be sunny with temperatures around 65. Friday will be sunny and warmer with highs around 80. It cools again on Saturday with mostly sunny skies and temperatures in the mid 60s. Right now in Saginaw, it is mostly cloudy and 39.
Welcome back to Michigan Mornings. I'm Matthew Handley. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin and former Congressman Mike Rogers met in Grand Rapids last night for their first debate in the race for the open U.S. Senate seat here in Michigan. It was televised across the state and included a wide range of topics from immigration to abortion to FEMA. Former Congressman Mike Rogers claimed the Federal Emergency Management Agency is spending money on the wrong things. FEMA spent almost $700 million on housing illegals and now just told uh, North Carolina they don't have enough money to take care of American citizens. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said in a press conference last week that disaster relief funds were not spent on migrants and that the agency had implemented immediate needs funding, which pauses some spending not tied to disasters. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin responded saying Congress ought to give more money to FEMA each year. We can know we're going to have more storms. We're going to have stronger storms. We're going to have uh, extreme weather. And FEMA needs to be prepared, not just with the right personnel, but with enough cash to actually handle all those things. Former Congressman Mike Rogers also says he wants the federal government's $500 million grant to General Motors for an electric vehicle production to be pulled. The Republican nominee says he does not support the federal funding to convert GM's Grand River assembly plant in Lansing to make EVs. He also expressed opposition to a controversial electric vehicle battery plant, which is slated for construction near Big Rapids due to the company's ties to China. Both candidates agreed they support the federal government's loan to restart the Palisades nuclear power plant and that more energy production is going to be needed by Americans in the coming years. On foreign policy, Slotkin touted her work in the CIA under Presidents Bush and Obama, while Rogers referenced his law enforcement background. When discussing the multi-front war that Israel is currently fighting, Slotkin said the U.S. needs to avoid being sucked into a land war in the Middle East, and both agreed that a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas is needed. Both candidates also said they would not support a national abortion ban. Rogers said the people of Michigan voted for Proposition 3 in 2022, and that he would not legislate in Washington against that will. Slotkin said if she is elected to the Senate, she would vote to codify Roe v. Wade into law. Both candidates will meet for another debate later this month. St. Ambrose says, be faithful and courageous when you are persecuted within so that you may win approval when you are persecuted in public. I'm Matthew Handley. That does it for this edition of Michigan Mornings. Lord willing, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.